Welcome back to the People's Conference presented by AMAC and Turning Point. We are here with the Brandon Tatum. <laughs> we just got off stage. Yes, How are you sir. doing today? How's it I'm going? doing great. I'm blessed. I'm alive. God is good. I'm doing good. God is good. So how's it feel to he be here in Detroit, specifically where we are today and uh, at this Turning Point event? Well, it's awesome. Detroit in and of itself, I haven't been able to travel around Detroit. You know, I would love to go see a few places. I did go to a steakhouse the other night because I love steak. So I've had a great experience here. This event is incredible. Yeah. I mean, I love to see so many patriots here enjoying patriotism, enjoying. I hear a lot of people talk about God. Yeah. I love it all, man. I, we need more of this to show the world that it's just not a few, a handful of us in a closet somewhere. We're all out. We believe in God, we believe in this country, and we're gonna fight for what's right. Absolutely, I think there's been some prayer services sort of integrated yeah. to the sessions here. Um, and to be honest, I was, I'm quite surprised with Detroit. I've been here in quite some time coming in, things look pretty clean, things yeah. look looks right. pretty nice here. I, you know, very surprised. And the irony too of where we're at, you know, with what's going on with the elections, you know, yeah. we counted here in, in 2020. Um, so on the election, you know, now we're looking at a potential, well, we're looking at a candidate in Donald Trump that now allegedly is a felon. Yeah. What, what, what's your thought on all this craziness? I don't care if you're a felon <laughs> yeah. or not. I'm voting for Donald Trump no yeah. matter what. Yeah. My thoughts on the whole thing is that here's how I look at it. And they messed up when they tried to make Donald Trump a felon. If, if he actually did something that was wrong, he got to take it on the chin. It just it is what it is. But when you look at what they claim he did, yeah. the underlying charge that made him a felony pass you know, the statute of limitations. I don't think people even know what it is anymore. Right. Nobody you know? know. I tell somebody, go ask anybody, what was the underlying charge that made those, those, um, where he misappropriated, I guess, in the yeah. bank. So he the, was supposed to report it to the FEC. It's very confusing. Right. The whole it's confusing. Thing. They said he misappropriated stuff within the business record. Right. Well, there has to be another charge or he's doing that to conceal something or commit right. another but crime. But nobody knows the other there charges. There is no other <laughs> real crime. Right. If you're going to charge him with it and you're going to convict him of it, you, you should have unanimous support in what that underlying crime would have been. Yeah. Because just say nobody agrees on it, then yeah. therefore it should have never been a felony. They should have never tried to put him in, you know, make him a felon. All they're doing is showing us that they're full of crap. Yeah. And it's just going to make us want to vote for Trump even more. I, I'm telling you, before they indicted him, I love Trump, and I always love Trump. I love what he did for this country. I was kind of weaning away a little bit. I got tired of the, the drama. I'm like, you know, I like DeSantis. DeSantis is clean. DeSantis got educated, served this country. He's a great guy. They indicted Trump. Yeah. And I said, screw these people. Yeah. Y'all not finna do him like this in the shadows while we look this way. Screw y'all. We're gonna put Donald Trump back in our office, and he's gonna win, and we're gonna get our country back. Yeah. It almost seems like like you said, it's it's backfiring on them. They're sort of yes. bringing him into the public spotlight. You know, the courtroom and in front of these sessions seems to be his campaign trail. They think they're taking him off the campaign trail, but that is essentially, you know, waging war against the DOJ has become that. You know, so yeah. I, I don't know. Do you do you think there's a big miscalculation there and what they're doing? And what are you seeing as far as the sentiment? You know, polling has shown he's improving with black and Latino voters. Do you think this has... Is there any correlation between what's going on with the court system and that? I know it might sound sort of face value, but you know, it, it seems to be going in that direction. Well, I think if they would have if they would have silently put him away, yeah. maybe nobody would have known about it. Yeah. But when you see how ridiculous it is, this has never happened in the history of this country. People can see that other people have committed far worse, uh, blatant crimes, and they've done nothing. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Maybe this guy Trump isn't as bad as what they're saying. Look at what they're doing to him. They, if they can do it to him, they can do it to us. Also. People may identify with how the justice system does people wrong. And so they see that and they go, what are they doing here? I, I, I know how I feel to get done wrong yeah, by the criminal justice system. And right. And so I think it's waking people up. I, I don't necessarily prescribe to the fact that black people are coming to Donald Trump because he's a felon. I, I mean, most black people are not felons. Right. right. So I think people are smarter than what they think. They see what's happening. It makes them look at other things that he's done. It makes them go back and evaluate Donald Trump in a more deep way. They may watch him on TV. They may have never thought about watching him because he's in the spotlight. Yeah. And so then they watch him and they say, well, wait a minute. I'm looking at my grocery bills. I'm looking at the direction of the country. It's terrible. Yeah. They remember when the borders open, all these illegals are coming through, and, and Joe Biden said there's no crisis. Yeah. People didn't forget that. Now you even, even those communities now speaking up, they've had enough of it. And the irony yeah. is if you were to ask a Democrat leader, a felon, you know, they assume it's a black person. So yeah, yeah, the yeah. reverse racism is quite, it's astonishing, really. Listen, listen, we know that if they can rig something against Donald Trump, 
we know that they are committing real crimes. Yeah, it's always jo projection. Yeah. Joe Biden literally had classified documents in his house, unsecured. We see the pictures of them. Yeah. They even said they were unsecured documents. He had top secret documents. He shouldn't have had them. Yeah. But because he's decrepit, we're not going to, you know, pursue. That, if people can see that. Hillary yeah. Clinton, she should be under the jail. Yeah. I told people a long time ago at my funeral, somebody that's doing my eulogy need to just say it in front of everybody, Hillary Clinton should have went to jail because she's going to be far dead before my eulogy. Yeah. But she should go to jail. Sending and receiving classified documents on a server yeah. that the government don't know about, jail. Yeah. If you and I did that, under the jail. We've yeah. been in solitary confinement. So people, the, what happens is the, the house of cars get, begin to fall. For me, it was Barack Obama bashing police. Knock my cards down. I said, wait a minute, something ain't right. I need to reevaluate this. I don't trust nobody that won't stand up for men and women that wear the uniform. And, so, and then, what do you know? I find out about the Republican Party, and I say, well, dang, they're, they're, they're aligned with everything I believe. Yeah. Maybe I've been lied to. Is that what it was for you? Was that sort of the— A hundred percent. You know, because when well, you're black, you're a Democrat. Yeah. And it's ingrained in your mind, and it's perpetuated and propagated to you in every aspect of life. Your favorite artist is talking about being a Democrat and racist white people. Yeah. Your favorite actor is doing the same thing. The politicians, everybody's saying the same thing. Your grandma's still talking about back when they had a separated water fountain. And so you get that ingrained in your mind until you grow up and grow out of it. And that's pretty much what happened to me. I used to be down that same path. I hated police. Yeah. Then I became a police officer. I hated Republicans. I thought they were racist white people. Then I became a Republican. Because God can, if you are open to it, God can open your mind up to more stuff. The, the pivotal point for me was when I got saved because I still was holding on to that racial thing, even even when I went to college. When and you all say that. racial thing, like? Like meaning that I didn't like white people that much. Yeah. Because I feel like white people were always against me. Yep. I feel like no matter what I did, I got to work three times harder than a white man. That's what they used to tell us. Yeah. So you, you automatically have animus towards white people. And when you grow up in a black neighborhood where you don't see white people, unless they're the police or crackheads, yeah. you know, you— you, you don't know that there's good white people out there. You it just almost see seems like image. a path to disenfranchise by consistently telling someone you're oppressed, right. things are going to be harder for you, watch out for the white man, he's going to come. Like, yeah. It seems like you're putting someone in position, yeah. setting up for failure, setting up for, I don't know, it, it, it seems like a difficult position. You, if you live your life with those lenses, right. that's what you're going to see. When I get pulled over, it's because I'm black, right? right? I mean, that's what my worldview is. If a white person does something, like I had a, a white lady come up to me the other day, and if I was still lost, I would have been mad at her. <laughs> I, I was dressed, probably like this. I had this hoodie on, yeah. black pants, and she came to me and said, sir, where's my car? Like I was valet. Like, yeah. I don't, do not care. I'm yeah. like, the guy's right there. I'm not, I'm not feeling any type of way. I don't care, you yeah. know? But if I was still looking at through the lenses, I'm, I'm like, black. Yeah. cause I'm a black man. And the funny thing is the valet actually was a black man. He was over there. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, she kind of got a point. The two guys, <laughs> black here, one of us is a valet. But you got to not see the world through that lens. But when I got saved, God revealed to me that the lens is not race. It's actually what, what a person stands for. It's yeah. actually, to me, if a person is believing in Christ or not. That's where your lenses lie. Not necessarily because, you know, of somebody's racial thing that they can't control. It's not like when I was born, I'm like, yeah, God, give me no, no. Turn the melanin up a little bit. I yeah. want, I want that melanin skin. Like the parents, that your parents had an option yeah, yeah. or something we, like that. What, we can't control the color of our skin is, and, it, and and at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because when I go out in the summertime in Texas or I'm in Arizona, I turn a couple shades darker. Yeah. So is that? I mean, what, what does that mean? You know. So it doesn't matter. That stuff is superfluous. Yeah. It seems as if with everything going on, it's really solidified these groups of: Are you American? Are you for America right. or not? Are you faith-filled? Are you a God-fearing person right, or right, not? Right. It's a good versus evil situation, yeah. you know, and for whatever you want to say about it, it seems there are two sides at this point. Choose the path of righteousness or evil, right. you know, and there's a lot of things culminating into that point. A thousand um, percent. So before we let you go, Brandon, we, we really appreciate you taking a moment with us. What are you focused on, you know, not just before the election, but over the next few months? What, what, is, what is Brandon Tatum focused on besides the podcast, the show, things like that? Is it something in your life, something in your family? What's coming up in your life that you're really primarily thinking about on a day to day? Yeah, so I, you know, I have different aspects of my life that I focus on, different pillars, right? Yeah. I mean, I have I have my relationship with God, yeah. which I always want to want it to be strong. I want to pray more. I want to be more consistent at church. You know, that's things that I always want to work on. And then I have my family in another subset, right? I'm a father. 
I got a, you know, a three-year-old boy. I don't know what I was thinking. I started over. <laughs> you know, I had a 13-year-old almost was to the finish line. Yeah. So, but I, I want to be a good husband to my wife. I want to be a good father. I, I want to focus on that. I want to be intentional. I don't yeah. want to just exist and, and be showing up at the house laying around. I want to say, how can I be a better father? How can I be more compassionate to my wife and all that stuff? And then I have the political stuff. We got to win, man. Yeah. We, got, we have to win. This, our country and everybody who died for this country, um, they're at stake in, in this particular ballot situation. So, the legacy of America, right, really. Right. So I want to be the most prepared. I want to be the most educated. I want to be consistent. I put out three to five videos a day yeah. on my YouTube. I do everything on social media. I hired a whole team to help me do all of it so I can be everywhere at one time all the time. I do three-hour radio show. I want to just keep doing it. I do interviews like this. I want to do all that I can in that area to make sure that I'm doing my part because God has called me to have a certain position that I'm doing my part to make sure we preserve this country. Well, Brandon, God bless, and we appreciate you. you stopping here, and we yeah, wish you pleasure. the best of luck in all of those pursuits. So thank, thank you, you so much. God bless you, man. Thank you.